Does anybody have a Bible verse they'd like to share with us tonight? Now, down there, too, you can share with us, too. Psalms 23. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. 55, 6. Anyone else? All right.
correcting and he brings up my past I just tell him I'm forgiven and it's buried at last The bloodshed on Calvary now speaks for me My Lord is taken good care of me Praise the Lord. It's good to be here tonight. Oh, it's pathetic. As Emma, what was my Emma? Emma, that was pathetic, wasn't it? I said it's good to be here tonight. Glad I'm saved. How about you? Amen. Amen. That, that right there sounds a little bit better. All right, you got your Bibles. Turn with us to the book of Luke. Uh, I'm going to look here in the eighth chapter, and I'm going to be flipping around some different places there. So. Um, I'm going to be also in Philippians uh, 4, and then also over in 1 Timothy, um, 1 Timothy chapter number 6 also. I'm going to look at just a, a few things right there. And uh, of course, this the, the book of Luke here in the 8th chapter, uh, Jesus is speak, uh, he's preaching, and uh, he's healing, he's speaking in parables, He's teaching, he's preaching, he's doing all the above. Amen. And he is, listen, all the things in which that he is able to do then, I want to say to you, I want to reiterate this to you tonight, he is able to do all those same things in today's time. Amen. Amen. I believe that. I said all the things that he done right here in Luke chapter 8, he can still yet do today. I believe that with all my heart. Amen? So it, as, as we stand, those that want to stand as, as I try to read, I'm not the best reader in the world, but uh, the Lord still yet calls me to, called me to preach, and uh, He put a calling upon my life, even though my, my uh, disabilities. It says here in verse number 4, When much people were gathered together, and were come to, to him out of every city, he spake by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock. As, as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. Amen. You ever feel like you've been choked throughout this spiritual battle and throughout our spiritual lives that we go through? That with that, that amen. Let me let me just say that that struggle is real. Amen. And it goes on. And it said, and under fell on good ground. That's what we're after. That's what we're gunning for. Is that seed that falls upon the good ground, and 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 it sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. 
And, and when he had, had said these things, he cried, And he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Thank you, you may be seated. Now I know that tonight that, that, that it's talking about there the seed, talking about the seed, and there's a lot of different things in which that, that, that's referenced to. Some people reference that to God's Word going out. Some people reference that to, to our, um, our duty as a Christian, our duties as, as church members, amen, just because you're a church member and you're just a church member, don't think that you don't have a duty here tonight. Amen. You have a reason. You have a purpose. You have all those things tonight. Amen. And, and you've still yet got a job. You hear me preach that a lot. You hear me say that a lot. That's because we want to reiterate that to some people tonight. Amen. If we want a live, thriving, spiritual church. Amen. It's going to not just take the pastor. It's not going to just take the song leaders, the deacons. Amen. It's not just going to take the teachers. It's going to take every single soul that, that is a part of this congregation, amen. I believe that with all my heart tonight. And I believe this, even though that we're in a troubled time, even though that we're in a, a, a time of, of, of discord, seems like, in the world today, and we've got, hey, there's, there's battles going on, and this country's invading that country. Let me just tell you tonight, I stand flat-footed, and I say this, I believe that there's still yet hope in the, in the, in the living church. There's That hope is Jesus Christ, amen. It's been that way since the beginning of time and it's going to be that way from now on. I believe that, that, that his church is, going, is built upon a, the, the foundation, the rock and that rock is Jesus Christ and it's never going to go anywhere. The only place that the church is going to go is up when he calls us home. Amen. I believe that tonight, don't you? I believe that. I, I, I don't believe I can believe any other way. Amen. And be saved tonight. I believe that. Tonight I want to think about, I want us to look just for a second. And, and I've never heard it preached this way. And I hope that I'm not taking anything out of context. Hey man, but I want to look at the seed tonight. I want, I want to, let's take just a few minutes and let's look at this seed. In the process. And I, I, use, I use this Wednesday night. And you know what? It's not left my heart ever since Wednesday night. And I've got two other messages that I felt like the Lord may lead tonight. And I've got them both lined out in my Bible right here. Hey man, I don't know. I may preach them all tonight. I don't know. Got in the pulpit a little early tonight. Amen. If the Lord's in it, then praise the Lord. I, I'm, praise the Lord. I'm all about it, ain't you? Amen. And if the Lord ain't in it, well, we'll praise Him anyway and we'll go to the house. Amen. So I say to you tonight, let's look at that seed just a second. I was uh, driving up the road the other day and looked down at my brother's uh, yard there and he'd done plowed up his garden. Done got his garden spot ready to go. Amen. You got to start early. So with a seed, there's some preparation. If you, if you have a bountiful harvest, amen, that thing just don't appear. Right. Amen. I said this Wednesday night, hey, for, for you eight or ten that's out here on Wednesday night, this is just reiterating some things for you. Hey, man, but I believe this is needed tonight. Hey, man, you know what? I'm, I'm the world's worst and I'm guilty. I love good fresh vegetables come time for harvest time. You know? I, I, I'm right with you. But hey, Danny, I, I can't be mad if I, if, I don't, if, if I don't put forth the preparation, if I don't put forth the effort, if I don't put forth the, the, the planting and everything that goes with that seeding process. I can't get mad and walk out my yard and say, I don't understand why there's not tomatoes growing there. You know what? There's a lot of Christians there right now. Hey man, there, there's no preparation in their life. There's no, there, there's no planting of the seed in their life. And they wonder, where is God? Hey man, if we want God's blessing, there's got to be some preparation with this thing. There's got to be some effort put forth. Hey Amen. And, I, and, I, and I'll get to that effort part right here in just a little while. But first of all, it, the, 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 the soul has to be cultivated. I just read to you right there in, in that uh, uh, chapter number 8 right there, and, and it said that, that some fell on good ground. Yeah. You know what? And all the bad and all the ugly, 
All the untruth that's out there in this day and time, I believe this, there's still yet some good ground. Hey man, with these babies that's running around in here, that's some good ground, hey man. We need to take full advantage of that while we can. Hey man. So I say there that some fell on good ground. Now what would be considered good ground? Well, it's not rocky. Hey man, it's, it's well manicured. Hey man, let me just say tonight. If, we, if we're going to be productive Christians, if we're going to be what God wants us to be and what God has, wants to bless us to be, amen, there's going to have to be some preparation take place in our lives and in our hearts, amen. It's got to take place in our hearts before we can ever apply it to our lives. Amen, we've got to get to the point in our, our hearts and our lives that we say, Lord... We get right down into his word, his promises that he's made to us and we get real with him and say, Lord, we want to serve you. Lord, we want to love, not because we're supposed to, not because it's the right thing to do on Sunday night and Sunday morning. Amen, it is the right thing to do, but God's not interested in that. He is interested in getting right down with him. He said, Lord, we love you. We love you because we want to love you. Lord, we, so we want to serve you because not because it's just the right thing to do, but because we love you and we want to see you work in our hearts and our lives. Amen. That's some good ground. Amen. You take that seed right there and you put that seed in good ground and guess what's going to happen? Yes, sir. What's going to happen? You, when you start early, Brother Brandon, you plow that garden up. It's plowing time right now, amen. Probably not tonight. It's raining. It's going to rain 400 gallon a minute tomorrow. Amen. Listen, it's plowing time. Well, I say to you tonight, Calvary Baptist Church, it's plowing time. Hey, man, hey, and let me just, let, we're going to go into the growing process just for a second. Now, some get discouraged in that. Oh, yeah. it's, it's just the right season. We don't wait till the middle of July and put out our garden. Why? Because it don't get the nourishment that it needs in July. Amen. Oh, yeah. That's why we got to start early. Now they say, I'm not a, I'm not a gardener. But I don't know everything they are to know about gardening. I probably forgot more than what I know, amen. But I was brought up and under that. And well, you know what? The way it looks, we're going to have to get back to that. Amen. 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 And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Amen. 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 So I say to you tonight, let's, let's look at that cultivation just a little bit. And let's get to that good ground. All right, once you get that good ground cultivated up, how do we get, how do we get to, to that point spiritually is that we've got to get with God. We've got to be on the same page with Him. Hey man, He don't, listen, he, He's not into making deals. He's not just a man upstairs. Oh, that bulls my blood. When I hear somebody say, well, me and the man upstairs, we made a deal. God don't make no deals with man. He is God, amen, and he is sovereign. Hey, when we get to the realization that we need him and we love him and that we want him, hey, man, then guess what? Then that seed is ready to be planted. Amen. Amen. When we get our children to the point that, 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 that they're ready, they're ready to receive him and they want to learn about his word. Hey man, you know what that is? Miss Amy, that's just a season, hey amen. Because there's a lot out there to get, get, get our children's attention. Hey amen. Even in a Christian home, there's still yet a lot of influences out there. To get their eyes off the Lord and get their eyes off the church. Amen. You know what? It's important that we take advantage of that season in which that we have. So therefore, in order to get that good ground, we've got to start a cultivation. I can't look into your heart and I can't tell you what needs to be there, what don't need to be there, so on and so forth. But I can tell you this. Oh, the Holy Spirit speaks to Tim. And sometimes he speaks to Tim harshly on what don't need to be there and what's there. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. But if I want to be a productive, 
If I want to love people the way that it says to love people, I got to allow him to come in and cultivate my heart. Sure. Amen. Sure. And you know what? I still got some growing to do too. Yeah. Amen. If I'm 102 year old preaching his word at 102, I'm going to believe this with all my heart. I believe I still yet got some growing to do. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So I say here, there's that, there's that good ground. I'm trying to hurry tonight. All right, in that good ground, then what's, what's to happen? We plant the seed. You get, to, you get, your, you get your garden tilled up, you get, her, get, her, get the rows lined out. Hey Amen, you plant that seed. Is it all year long that it's a good time to plow? No, it's just the season. Hey Amen. You just got a short time in which you got to get the seed in the ground. You got to get that ground prepped up. Let me just say this to you. What if? What if the season for us to prep the ground is about over with? What if that? What if What if we just had 45 minutes? What if we just had 45 minutes in a service to get people in? Hey man, what if? What if we just had four, a, a 45 minutes left? Hey man, to to be able to teach these children all in which that, 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 that'll be able to carry them through. Amen. In 45 minutes, what, what, listen, it's just a season. It's just, and, and, and you, know what, you know what the Bible teaches about that season? It's short. Amen. So we've got to be about his business. We just had 45 minutes to to reach and to be able to teach these children enough to be able to carry them through the rest of our lives. Could we do it? Could we do it? We had 45 minutes to the visitors that come in here. We had 45 minutes to give them something that makes a difference in their life. Could we do it? Could you do it? Set the preacher aside for a little while. Hey Amen. There's a preparation that's got to take place yes, sir. in order for it to get to be good ground. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hey Amen. Mm-hmm. Secondly, the rows are lined up. Let's say we're at the good ground part. Lord, we're in unity. We're in one mind, one accord. I'll get to some of that here in just a little while. Now we're going to look into you, Lord. Help us to grow. All right, the seed's planted. What's hap- what happens then? It takes root, absolutely. You, you, the seed's planted, you, you cover it up. Does, does, does that seed just immediately pop out of the ground immediately, just as soon as you put it in there? No, what happens? It has to lay there 21 days, or it has to lay there. And in that time, and, and we said it, that it may just be looking like it's a dormant seed, and my goodness, it's not coming up. Why are we not seeing? That's the mindset in which that a lot of Christian people are at in this day and time. Why am I not seeing fruits for my labor? I worked hard. I've cultivated the ground. I've done everything in which I needed to do. I sowed it according to the directions in which that it's said to do. And why am I not reaping of that? You've got to give it a little bit of time, amen, to grow. We, every single one, we go through those seasons. I don't like that, that, that part in my life. Spiritually, I do not like that. But it's part of the growing process. It's part of me growing spiritually to help you grow spiritually. It's a dormant. My, my grandpa used that a lot of times. He said that's at a dormant stage. It's just kind of laying there. It may look to, in our eyes that it's just laying there. Amen. Amen. But in under that ground, there's something taking place. Just like that tomb when it was sealed up, inside that tomb, there was something taking place. (laughs) I can't get a little bit excited right there. Woo! Hey man, we every single one go through that. We every single one go through that, that, that spiritual state in our life and we begin to question things. Hey man... I'm not seeing this, or I'm not feeling this way, or I'm not feeling that way. It's through a growing spurt. That is a time in which that, you know what? 
Keep the ground cultivated. Keep it good ground. Hey man, what do you do when you plant your garden? What, what do you do, Brother Brandon? You nurture it. How do you nurture it? You hoe it, water it. What do you do? You keep the weeds out of it. Amen. You keep them. Yeah, you put the fertilizer to it. I'm telling you tonight. Hey man, every single bit of that will preach right there. You cultivate it. When you're spiritually in that dormant time, hey man, you cultivate it. That's the time in which that you nurture it. Amen. You don't. You don't dig it up. Uh, hey man, you don't start over. Hey man, you pray to God and ask God to get the increase. Hey man. Hey. So therefore, we've got to, that's at the, the crucial point. That's at the crucial time, Brother Donnie. That we're laying there and we're not seeing nothing big happen. We're not seeing souls say, maybe, maybe our voices, we've lost tune of them songs, amen. You know what? Maybe we're at that molten stage, amen. I'll preach that a little bit later on. But I'm telling you, it's all part of the growing process. Amen. That's at the time that you add water. What's the Bible refer to water as? <laughs> Hey man, what what you said? Pour the fertilizer to it. Yes, you know what that is? What's what's the, what's fertilized? Mm-hmm. Oh, hang with me now. <laughs> hang with me. What's fertilized tonight? What is it? It's food for the seed. Hey man, where? Where you you find yourself in that dormant period and you don't know what to do, you don't know where to turn, and you say, Boy, felt like that God's just slept me. Felt like that my prayers are not reaching over the the top of my head. That's at the time that the root is taking place in your life. Amen. And that's at the time that you are to cultivate it, that you are to nurture it. Get in His Word like never before. Get on your knees like you've never prayed before and watch God work and watch God move. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. sir. That fertilizer, that's food. Hey, man, you know what a a bag of fertilizer is to me? Well, now it's about probably $60. Amen. That's the the worst thing. You know what a bag of fertilizer didn't do me? Absolutely no good. Well, but it's something that little seed that's been planted down there. It's something that that's that's food for his soul. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Little Clayton had him here this morning. See my jacket. He spewed up all over me. Mm-hmm. That milk. I was holding him up. Last night living around on him. Somehow I got his that baby milk in my mouth. <laughs> no, I wasn't on the bottle. But somehow I tasted it and I said, Oh gosh. That stuff's horrible. No wonder he's puking it up. <laughs> but it's what he's got to have in order for him to grow. Some of these days, Brother Brandon, he's going to come off of that bottle. He's going to come off of that old nasty looking meal. Amen. And you know what he's going to go to then? He's going to go to the meat. Amen. Amen. But right now it's real crucial and it's real important. And wish that while he's still yet taking root, that we give him exactly what he needs. God looks at you the same way. You may be at that point in your life. You feel like that, boy, I just, I just, I'm just, I'm struggling with this or whatever. Hey, man, let me tell you something. That's when God, that's when, like I said just a second ago, pray like you've never prayed before. Because that's when the root is taking place. That's when things are fixing to spring up. Amen. Because I say this, it's not always that it's always a planting season. Amen. Hey, we don't, it's, it's just a season in which it is time to sow. And then guess what? It's, a, it's time to nurture once that plant comes up and once that garden comes up. You get out there and you pray over it, amen. You love on it, amen. Hey, and you know what? You just keep on cultivating. You keep on de-weeding. I'm talking about de-weeding. I've never seen a day and never seen a time that there's so many false doctrines. There's so many false religions out there getting people's attention, honey. I'm telling you, if you're not rooted in the Word, you're liable to be blown here and blown there, amen. Hey, you need to be rooted in God's Word. Know what you believe and believe what you know. 
Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. sir, There's a lot out there to get our young people's attention. Let me just say this. My girls never told me where I, was, where I needed to go to church. Hey Amen. Don't let your girls tell you either. Hey Amen. God expects you to be head of your house, you men. And if you ain't got a man there, hey, he's expecting you women to be to take charge. Yeah, it's a double row. Hey Amen. But you know what? You suit up and God will bless you for it. Hey Amen. You stand strong and God will bless you for it. You keep on cultivating. You keep on Planting, amen. And then some of these days, if you'll just keep on loving, if you'll keep on loving that seed, now let's pretend like this word is the seed tonight, amen. Woo! You keep on cultivating in that word. You keep on praying God's hand be upon you. Then some of these days, there's going to be a period, there's going to be a season in which that we get to what? Harvest. Amen. Amen. We got to take advantage of the season in which that we've got. Amen. Amen. What are we going to do with it? Hey, I think about this. It's in the book of Psalms somewhere. I may, I'll look it up for you. Probably not tonight. I got my Bible marked in about 12 other places. But it talks about this. Tony said I had something on the back of my shirt. So I'll just get that out there. Y'all can look at it, get over it. I'm about to sweat today. Yep. Amen. I blame it on that baby spewing up on my back. She's wanting a new washer. She's blaming it on the old washer. <laughs> Amen. She wouldn't know what it'll be like to go to the creek and wash her clothes. Whoa, she'd be thankful. She'd be thankful. She had to do that a time or two. She'd be thankful that old rocking washer sets in. <laughs> Sound like it tired the house down. Hey, man, somebody's going to have to give me a ride home tonight. Let me just say this to you. Lord, where was I going with that? Let me just say this. If we'll cultivate, if we'll allow God to cultivate in our hearts and in our lives, hey, man, even when we get at that dormant state that we'll just feel like that we're just laying there, nothing's taking place, that's the time to refocus. That's where we're at as church. We're fixing to refocus on some things. Bless you, Lord. You know what we're going to do? We ain't going to quit. Right. We ain't going to quit on... We're not, we're not going to quit striving for the things that we know is right. right. Man. That's right. We're not, you know what we're going to do? We're going to refocus. Amen. We're going to refocus not just one, not just the preacher and the deacons, if they'll show up to the deacons meeting. <laughs> You know what we're going to do? We're going to get on the same page. Yeah. We're at that dormant time. That's when the root begins to take place. Uh-huh. You know what? It's even in, in, in that time in which that there's growth taking place and you don't even realize it. Mm-hmm. You say, where's that growth at? Well, it's in that time in which that Tim gets to feeling insecure about things. And old Tim has to drop down pray. Hey man! How could, I, how could I be insecure about my salvation? How could I preach to you if I didn't know what I believe? Hey man! How in the world, how in the, hey, if I didn't believe this Bible from cover to cover, how in the world could I stand and preach it tonight? I was getting back to this. There's a place in Psalms where it talks about what's that? The seagull. Anybody ever seen a seagull? <laughs> Big, what's, 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 what's special about a seagull? His beak, what is it? It's shaped like a, I don't know what. It's ugly. It, goes, it comes out and it goes way down. You know what that's for? That's for those dormant times. <laughs> That's for those times. You say, what's that got to do with that? What, what's that got to do with that old seagull? What's that got to do? What? A pelican. Pelican's the one that's got the big, not the seagull. You got to watch the seagulls. They're the devil. The pelican has a big, ugly beak. You know what that's for? That's for those dormant times. That's for those times in which that it's hungry. 
and there's nothing around to eat. You know what it does? Why, you know what it does? It gets in. There's just a season in which that it can eat. Amen. When it flies over the water and it says there's a school of fish and it's all, they're all bulling up, you know what it does? It, do, it, it, it dives down and it scoops that bill up full of fish and then it goes on its way. And as it goes on its way, when it gets to feeling tired, when it gets to feeling weak, you know what it does? It takes that reserve in which that he has in his beak and he begins to eat them, them, them things. Amen. You know what? There's going to be dry times spiritually within our lives. Spirit is not always going to strive for man. It's in those times you reflect back and it's in those times that you pray. It's in those times that you sing. It's in those times that you glorify God. It's in those times that you give Him praise like you've never given. Amen. And that's enough to carry us through that we can get to the harvest. Now let's talk about that harvest just for a second. We can do every single thing that we're supposed to do. We can... We can, cult, we can allow God to cultivate our heart, Brother Brandon. We can allow God to plant His seed within our heart. We can allow God, even in the dormant time, amen, yep. even in the time that we feel like, boy, we're just, we're just laying here, we're just sitting there, even in those times, that's when we allow God is doing a work. We can allow God, even in that time in which that He puts us fertilized to us, He gives us nourishment, amen. Even in those times, amen, that we have to reflect back to the good times of, of what it was like when the bank account was full and the church house was full and everybody was praising the Lord, amen. Hey, I miss those times, don't you, amen? But you know what? It's not going to be as just for a small season and then it's time for the next season. Amen. We can allow God to fertilize our heart and fertilize His Word and fertilize His seed. Amen. And we can grow up and we can be, become what He wants us to be spiritually. Amen. But you know what? If we're not willing to harvest the harvest, amen, then all of that is in vain. What good is all that work and all that preparation if we're not willing to reap the harvest? Right. See, we can have Bible schools on top of Bible schools mm -hmm. if we ain't willing to work. Mm -hmm. We ain't willing to reap that harvest. Right. See, that takes a little bit of effort. Yeah. Sure. The Apostle Paul... In, 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 the, in, in the book of Ephesians there where it, where it talks about, and the young preacher made mention of it this morning. He said this. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, Principalities rulers of darkness. Amen. Spiritual wickedness, that's what we wrestle against. That takes some effort. Amen. We've got to be willing to put forth the effort. If we want a garden, we've got to be willing to plow it. and We've got to be willing to plant it. We've got to be willing to take care of it. We've got to be willing to fertilize it. We've got to be willing to do all those things. And, and, and then when it gets time for the harvest, then you got friends show up and you didn't even know you had friends. Amen. <laughs> Say that again, Brother Brandon. Hey, Amen. He's talking to the preacher right there. <laughs> I visit Brother Brown. I try to go visit him often. But hey, man, you let the harvest come in. It's Brother Brandon, what are you doing with this bucket of tomatoes out here? Hey, man. He'll say, get you some, preacher. I say, I didn't even have to put out a garden. Hey, man. If you allow God to work in your life the way that he wants to work in your life, there'll be others feed off of what he's done for you. Hey, man. That's right. Woo! <laughs> There'll be plenty to fill your cupboards oh, yeah. and roll out. <laughs> Man, yeah, to where your neighbors can come yeah. and your neighbors' neighbors can come and they can feast together yeah. all because of what God's done for you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yes, sir. But you got to be willing to put forth the effort. The Apostle Paul says we wrestle. 
I said this Wednesday night. Me and, me and Brother Wayne, we, every now and then, y'all may not see it. But every now and then, we'll, we'll kind of slap box a little bit. He says he's going to bring some boxing gloves in. I think he's scared to, amen. <laughs> They'll be here Wednesday night now that I said that. We like to wrestle around a little bit. When I was a youngster, I loved to wrestle. But the only bad thing was I was a little guy growing up around big guys. And I didn't win much. So therefore, I had to put forth a double effort. You folks tonight, you folks that think that you've got the deck stacked against you, yes, sir, you may have to put forth a little extra effort. Amen. You're looking at one right here that things didn't come easy for him. Amen. You look at one right here to get out of second grade the second time. I had to put forth some effort. Hey Amen. I had a teacher tell me, you're going to wind up in prison. She was right. Hey Amen. I had a preacher tell me that I, was, I had a teacher, not a preacher. I had a teacher tell me, you're dumb as a box of rocks. And you know what? She was right. There were some playground times that I spent reading them little, little one-line books just so I could try to get to where I could read. I'm telling you what, things didn't come easy to me. I had to put forth a little extra effort. They some of you spiritually that things are not going to come easily for you. Don't get wrapped up in it. Don't let the devil convince you that there's no use. You put forth that extra effort and watch God work. Amen. And I promise you, there'll be a harvest. There'll be a harvest that you'll not be able to reap by yourself. It'll take your neighbors coming from miles around to help you. Yep. Amen. So therefore, there's a little extra effort. In order for us to be where we won't need to be spiritually, it's going to take some effort. It's going to take some extra effort for some of us. Amen. <laughs> Oh, Jacob, things didn't come easy for him, did it? He, had to, he lied and tricked. Had to work extra hard. Esau, his twin brother, had it all, right? Had the blessing. Was cunning. By the Bible, he had the birthright, yeah. And by the Bible, he was an ugly outfit, but he could sure deer hunt. Amen. Oh, Jacob, he, he had to work extra hard for that. There's some of us that's no different tonight. There's some of us that you, you, you've been put in a little different spot, a little different situation. I'm talking to you at home as well. Things just might, might be stacked up against you, but you had to put forth a little bit more effort. That's why the Apostle Paul uses things like wrestle. That's why the Apostle Paul has to use words like press. Look with me right here in Philippians 4, brethren. I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth. You know what that reaching forth is? Yeah. That's effort. Right. Are you willing tonight to put forth the effort? Yeah. Hey Amen. It's going to take that. We got to reach forth. And for, forth unto those things which are before. There's some things that lies before Calvary Baptist Church if we're willing to reach forth to get them. Yep. Amen. There's some things that lies ahead for you. Well, pay attention to me. I'm trying to wind it up. Amen. There's some things that lies ahead for you spiritually if you're willing to reach forth for it. Amen. If you're willing to put forth that effort. Yes, sir. Said I press toward the mark. You know what that means? It means there's some effort going to have to go toward that thing. Sure. If we're going to reach that mark, we're going to have to put forth effort. Wow. Amen. Said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling, high calling of, of God in Jesus Christ. Oh, my. I think about Timothy. Let's talk about putting forth the effort. I'm trying to hurry. I'm trying to hurry. Pay attention to me now. Don't, don't, don't turn me off. The Apostle Paul writes to Timothy and he tells him this in 6, chapter 6, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse number 12, trying to hurry. He said this, he said, fight the good fight of faith. 
I don't know if any of you men as a boy ever, ever get in one of them, one of them old fights. I, I'm not encouraging that by no means. But I'm telling you, a good fist fight probably helps some people. Did I say that, Wayne? <laughs> That's, you was thinking it, wasn't you? I'm telling you what, when I was a boy, some of my best friends in the world, they was all bigger than me and they whooped me a lot, but they, a lot of times they had her to do. You know what? Sometimes it's going to hurt. I remember one of them one time giving me an uppercut to the old belly button. <gasps> Took the wind out of my sail. You know what? That hurt. There's going to be some things spiritually that we endure that's going to hurt. If we stand and we fight the good fight of faith, amen, it's going to take that effort. If we're going to reap that harvest, it's going to take us and it's going to take our effort to be, hey, God's just not going to lay it out right there and say, okay, well, 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 there you go. You just sit back and I'll just, I'll just give it to you. Amen. It's going to take some, some Jacob's it's going, to take some, it's going to take some people that's willing to go out, that's willing to stand, that's willing to press, that's willing to reach, that's willing to stand and fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Amen. It's going to take some church members to look around and say a crowd of 50 or 60 is not good enough on Sunday night. Right. Have we got comfortable with that? On, so slipping off into eternity by the second... Have we got comfortable that our church pews are empty? Have we got comfortable with, 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 with Sunday morning having about a half of a crowd? Amen. Are we comfortable with that? Are we comfortable with the fact that, that, that it's been a little while since we've seen souls saved? That's why I say we're in that dormant time. Hey Amen. Don't give up. And don't quit. We're in that time in which that God's given root. Amen. But are we comfortable and are we okay with that? Because if we are, don't get me wrong, honey, that's what we'll get. But if we're willing to fight, if we're willing to reach, if we're willing to press, if we're willing to wrestle, hey man, if that's what it takes for us spiritually to get to where we need to be, for God to use us for His honor and His glory, I say that He's worthy of that tonight, amen. And if it takes a little bit of effort on our part, amen, I say let's not retire, but let's refire together. Amen. 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 Look, 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 look back with me. Flip back. I'm sorry I'm flipping you around tonight. Back at Philippians. Let's go back to Philippians, chapter number 3. I might have said chapter number 4. I was looking at 4 because it's not on the same page. Chapter number 3. Verse number 15. I read to you right there verse 13 and 14. Now, let me read 15, 16 coming to a close. It says this. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect... Be thus minded. You know what that means? Let us be in unity. Let me, let me read on. It may not mean that just yet. Let me read on. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. And, and, and if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Now I want to ask you tonight, as we stand, where's our heart at? Where's our heart at? Where's your heart at tonight? If our hearts aren't set on the same thing. Five years ago, a little over five years ago, about lost count this morning, one of the little missionaries asked me, how long have you been here? Five? I, uh, I think a little over five years. Am I, am I right? A little over. So, a little over five years going on six. I ask you this. 
probably the first week, probably the first month that I was here. I said, what do you want to see out of the church? What do I want to see? What do we want to see tonight? Somebody speak to me. We want to see souls saved. That's good. What else we want to see tonight? Spiritual growth. What else? Huh? We want to see the pews filled. What else? What else? We want love. What else? We want to grow. We want to grow in His Word. Amen. All those things right there. I say five years ago, a little over five years ago, we said the same thing. Has anything changed? And so what? God's still the same God. I've tried my best as a pastor to try to grow. Have I failed? I'm sure of it. I'm one that I assure you. You don't need to point you point out my failures. I've already seen them. You know what? I'm sure you're in the same boat as I am. But I believe that God's still willing. Are we willing to put forth effort? Are we are we willing to allow God to prepare our heart? Or we're willing to allow him to put the seed in that he wants to grow? Are we willing to allow him to feed and to give the and, and to give the increase? Are you willing for that tonight? Are you dormant? Are you at that stage to where you just feel like nothing's going on? A lot of people walk off of then. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of people want to turn, searching for something else. When really, it's just that you're in a growing spurt. You're at a point and you're at a time and wish that you need to turn to the Lord like never before. And you need to watch Him work. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank You for Your wonderful grace and mercy. Thank You for Your Word. Thank You for all You do for us, Father. I pray that You'll give the increase, Lord God, of this message. Lord God, for those at home, those alike, Father. I pray that you'll help us, Lord God, that we can walk in unity. Lord God, that we can come together and like-minded every single event, every single thing that takes place here at Calvary, whether there's five or whether there's 500. But Lord God, that you be at the center of it all and not just at you at the center of it all, Lord God, but we are looking to you, the author and the finisher of our faith, God, that we're looking to you to lead us, to guide us, to protect us, to love us, to nurture us, and Lord God, to keep us, Lord God. And if Father, I pray and ask tonight, Lord God, if they be that one that's discouraged tonight, Father, I pray, God, that they'll come to you, that they'll pray to you. Lord God, if they be that one tonight, Lord, that's at a dormant stage, Lord God, that they feel like they're dormant, Father, Lord God, I pray that you reveal yourself to them in a mighty way, Father. I pray that you'll give that a little extra love, that little extra grace, that little extra mercy. Father, we love you. We want to honor you and glorify you in all that we do. In your precious name, amen.